Hey everyone, welcome back to WixFix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and today's video is another episode of our e-commerce mini series. Now for the first video of this part in the series, I showed you guys how to design your custom product page. However, I am not very good at code. So we're bringing on Ethan from the WixWiz YouTube channel. Of course, I'm gonna leave the link to his channel in the description below. I really ask that you guys go subscribe to his channel. He is a Velo genius. But Ethan is gonna be here for the next several episodes in this series to help bring that design that I made to life. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass the baton over to Ethan and he's gonna show you how it's done. Okay, so as Ryan has probably told you in the introduction, in this mini series, we are going to be learning how to connect this custom built product page that Ryan prepared to the products collection from the Wix store. So essentially every single element here is a bespoke Wix element. This isn't the original product page and we need to collect all of this to our data. And the first step in doing this will be to transform this page that we have here into a dynamic page. So currently this page, if I take a look over here, then you'll see right over here, this is part of the main pages and it is not yet a dynamic page. And when you're preparing your own product page, you can either choose to first create the dynamic page and then put the design on it. Or if you created your design like this on a regular page, then you can just convert this product page into a dynamic page. Either way works and it will have the same result. So in order to transform this into a dynamic page, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click these three dots right over here, and then I'm going to go to convert to dynamic page. Okay. So I moved myself over to the other side, just so you can see what's going on here uh, on this side panel. We just need to click here, start now. And since we are going to be using the, native Wix products collection in order to create these dynamic pages. Essentially, we can just click here existing collection and then select that from the drop down. So let's go down and here you can see that we have the stores category. And then under here, these are all the store collections and we specifically are going to be connecting it to the products collection. After I've done that, I just need to click next. And what it's going to do now is turn this into a dynamic page by adding a data set that is connected to a specific item from that collection. And then we'll be able to start linking up our data. Okay. So now that the conversion has completed, you can see here that at the bottom, we have an additional page under the dynamic page category, and we no longer have that page up here on top in our main pages. Uh, in addition, if I just go over here and I close this, and I close this as well. You can see here that this page is now connected to a data set. And we also have the option to go through the different items and select the item that we want this data set to now be connected to. So if I just click over here on this drop down up here on top, then you can see here a list essentially of all the products from the products data set. And when I change between them, so the data set of the page will change. Nothing is going to happen yet because we haven't connected any data. But remember that this is something that you can do as you're making the connection just to see how your design is going to look with different products. In order to view our data set, what we need to do is go right over here to the layers panel and then make sure that you have the page selected. Once you have the page selected, you want to go over here to the right side and open up the inspector and then go right over here to CMS connections. Once you've gone to CMS connections, then you can see here that we have the information about our data sets. And if you click these three dots right over here, then we have the option to either manage the content, which will open up the actual collection. Uh, we have data set settings and we have page settings. So let me go up over here and open up the data set settings. And this has just different things that we would typically set up when we are connecting elements to a data set. We don't need to touch anything here because really the only thing that we need to do is make sure that this data set is connected to a specific product item. And we're going to be handling the rest using Velo code in order to access this data set with Velo code. Uh, we can open up the code panel over here on the other side. And over here, you can see that we have the ID of that element. And now it's called dynamic data set. I'm just going to call it 
product data set. Sorry, actually, I'm going to call it products data set because it's connected to the products collection. You can also just leave it as dynamic data set if that's easier for you to work with. Once we've changed the ID, we can now use this ID inside our Velo code once we start coding. Now that we've got the basic page set up, what I'm going to do is one last step that we didn't do when we were setting up the shop page, which we couldn't because we didn't have this dynamic page yet, but now we can, and that is to connect the individual items in the products repeater of our homepage to these dynamic product pages so that when you click on them, you will navigate to these dynamic product pages. Okay, so here we are on the shop list page, and this is the repeater that we set up in the previous episodes of this tutorial, and this is connected to display all of the products from our product collection. And what I'm going to be doing now is connecting it so that when I click on a specific items media, so when they click on the image over here, it will take them to that specific product page. And in order to do that, I'm going to open up our IDE. So I'm going over here to the code panel, and then you're going to want to click up here. It says code in the Wix IDE. So I'm just going to click that and it'll open up the IDE here on the side. As this is loading, it's a great time to go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment if you have any questions so far. And now that the ID is open, we can head in and make this alteration to our code. So here we can see that we have the main media, okay, right over here. And this is essentially where we're going to be making the change inside the on item ready for this uh, products repeater. And essentially for the main media, we're going to be adding an on click event. So let me just select the item main media. And you can actually do this for any part of the repeater that you want. So it doesn't have to be specifically the media, it can be the entire container, it could be just the price, it's really up to you. And you'll just want to select a different item, depending on a different element, sorry, within the item, depending on what you want to nav to use for the navigation. Uh, for example, if you have a button, then you can connect that button as well. And we're going to have set it up so that on click, we are going to navigate to the new product page. And in order to do that, we're going to need to use a Wix API called Wix location. So I'm going to go, I'm going to scroll up to the top of my code. And over here, I'm going to import Wix location front end from Wix location front end. And in order to actually use Wix location, what we're going to be doing, let me just go back to where we were inside of the product repeater. Sorry for all the scrolling until I find it. Let me search main media. There we go. Okay. And here, what we're going to do is Wix location front end dot two. And here, essentially, we're going to want to have that URL for our for the product page that's related to that specific item. So in order to do that, we're going to have to figure out what the slug is for that product page. So let me just zoom right out and let's head back to our collection. So I'm going to go to our editor and I'm going to open up the products collection. And if I scroll over here all the way to the right, then we should be able to see this over here. Okay, so here you can see uh, products item. That's essentially, these are essentially the URLs for our individual uh, product pages that were created through the dynamic page. And it's important not to confuse these with the URLs of the native Wix product pages. And you can see that the difference here is that these have this path of product page, whereas the new ones that we created over here have the path of products. Okay, and it might be a little different in depending on how you set it up on your site. But the same principle will be the same that you have different 
paths for each of those two. And we're going to be wanting to use this one. Otherwise, we'll accidentally pe take people to the native Wix product page, which is not what we want. Uh, and essentially what we need to do here to get people to go to these product pages is to use this path of products and this slug that we have over here. That's the URL. And here we have, let me find it. Where's the slug? Shout if you see it there. Uh oh, sorry, I accidentally closed it. This part might be edited out. <laughs> but uh, here we are back in the collection. And now we can see here that the slug. Okay, this is what I was trying to show you before. So essentially, in order to navigate to one of these pages, we have to combine between that path of products and this slug. So in order to get this slug from the collection, we're going to need to find the field ID, which is just slug. Okay, and then essentially, we are just going to create a dynamic URL, which is products plus the variable of slug. So let me go back into our IDE so we can set that up. Uh, so what we're going to be doing here is, as I said, whoops, ignore that. As I said, we're going to be going into products. And then we're going to have our item data dot slug. Because if you recall, each item data is essentially one of the products from our product collection. And then we're going to get the slug of that specific item. That should be good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish the site. And let's go to the live site here. So da, da, da. let me remember how to go to the live site. View publish site. Okay. And here I am now on the live uh, shop list page. And you'll see that if I go down now and I click on one of these items, then up here it will go to the products and that slug URL. And you can tell probably that this is the new uh, product page that we have designed. Obviously, it's not showing the data from that specific product yet because we have yet to actually connect that using Velo code. Uh, but you can see that it is going to a different URL depending on which one I click. Okay, so that's set up. And then whenever we're done setting up the code for our individual product pages, this will be working. But that's basically going to wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix and Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Again, I want to give a special shout out to Aton from the Wix Wiz YouTube channel. This series would not be possible without him, so I'm really appreciative for him. But thank you again for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.